Well, today I'm going to tell you a story about how I thought that I hated web development and that it turned out that I didn't actually hate web development. It was something else that I hated. So let's just imagine for a moment that you are part of a large Fortune 500 company and you've hired a bunch of Java developers, great Java developers. They can program in Java, they can write back end code. And now, do I need to talk louder? Is that what this is? Really? I feel like I'm shouting. Oh my gosh. Okay, how's this? All right. <laughs> so imagine that you're this large Fortune 500 company. You've hired a bunch of Java developers to write Java code for you, back end services. They can do that like pros. And now you need them to write websites for you. They're Java developers. They don't know how to do that. So what's the solution? Well, one possible solution is to use a tool that lets them write websites in Java. There's a tool called Wicket out there, which works kind of like Java Swing, if you're familiar with that, and lets you code all these Java components, put them together, and magically out comes a web page. And really what's happening is it's translating all that Java code into JavaScript behind the scenes. Who knows what's happening? And out comes your web page. And it sounds like a great idea in theory, but in practice, it's really kind of painful. And I will show you some of the code if this monitor will work. Hooray. So here is an example. I might need to make this bigger. Don't make fun. Oops, font size. Maybe. Font. Basic. Come on. So basically, the way that this works is you make all of your, we'll try that. All right, so you write all of your Java code with your different elements. You write all of your Java code with your different elements. It's hard because I have to go down here to actually do the code. So you can see I have a form, and I have a text field, and then I have a button, and then I have to do this anonymous inner class thing to actually define a behavior on my button. It's a whole big thing. Yeah, you're laughing because it's kind of ridiculous. And the other great thing is, you see I have to add all of these things in the right order. I have to add my form to my page, and then I have to add my components to the form, and I have to make sure that that's all matching the DOM that I've already defined in my HTML. So I've got my HTML, I'm defining the hierarchy of elements, and then I have to define it again in my Java code. So it seemed like maybe a good idea, really isn't. You've got this duplication of work, and you don't really understand what's going on. You've got people who have never seen JavaScript before trying to write websites that are ultimately running on JavaScript, but they don't know what the JavaScript is that they're writing because they're just writing it in Java. So it turns out to not really be a good idea. And for me, it really wasn't fun either. I didn't understand what I was doing, and when something went wrong, I would just kind of hack at it until it worked, if I even got it to work at all. So I was able to get something working with this code that you see before you so that I can, let's see, where did it go? Oh, thank you. That's amazing. I wish I had known this was an option before. All right, so I actually managed to make this little app that I can use to, oh, maybe. Did it work? There we go. I can add a list of things. I can remove things from my list. So that's all well and good, and it works. But that code is not fun to maintain. And it just wasn't fun to write either. So eventually, people realized that having Java developers pretend to be web developers didn't really work. 
you had to teach them to actually be web developers. Sometimes, rather than trying to force a certain idea into the tools you already know, it's better to just learn a completely different language, learn a different tool that's actually right for the job. And that's where JavaScript comes in. So this, this hypothetical large company decided that instead of having their Java developers write websites in Java, they should just have the Java developers learn JavaScript. And then on top of that, you still need some sort of front-end framework to help you write your websites. And after evaluating several of them, they came to the conclusion that Angular was the way to go. <laughs> Angular is great because, yeah, we got people clapping. Yay, Angular. <laughs> Angular is great because it lets you write your websites in JavaScript so you know exactly what's going on. But it still has this sort of magic that happens where you can write JavaScript in your HTML and you can have this two-way data binding between your HTML and your JavaScript. And it just makes, it, it makes developing websites a lot of fun and certainly a lot easier than in Wicket. So here is that same code in Angular. This is the HTML. You can see I have my same input and my button. And this is the list of things down below. And I can actually define what my button does right here in the HTML, instead of having to have that whole layers of things and anonymous inner classes and all that mess that you probably don't want to think about. And my JavaScript is really just this right here. I create my initial empty list so that I can add things to it. And then I have a separate method that I pulled out for when you click the remove link. So instead of having all the HTML and then like 20 lines of Java, I have the same kind of HTML and basically three lines of JavaScript. And it's a lot easier to work with and modify. When I wanted to add the remove button, that was a lot easier to do for me in the Angular than in Wicket. It was just more natural. It made more sense. It's nice that you can just say, when I click this button, this is what I want it to do, just right there in your HTML. And if you want to, you can extract that thing out to be a separate method you have defined in your JavaScript. So you can have that linking, but you can still keep your concerns separate, which I think is awesome. And so this works just the same as the other one. I can add things. I even made it so that it clears out the text field after I enter the data. And I can remove things from the list. So same behavior, but totally different ways of coding it. And my conclusion is that Angular is by far the best way to go in this situation. And why is that really? I've kind of touched on some of these things already. But I think when you're choosing a tool, any tool, there are a set of questions that are worth considering. And I think these really come through with this comparison of Wicket to Angular. So what is it that really makes Angular the right tool? What makes any tool the right tool? I think these are some of the questions you need to consider. Look at community support, the ease of learning, the ease to understand, what kind of complexity it supports, what kind of magic it provides, and how fun it is to use. So for community support, I looked up Stack Overflow, and I found the number of posts that were tagged as Wicket versus Angular. And Wicket, which has been around many years more than Angular, has 2,389 posts that are tagged as about Wicket. Yes? Couldn't you just say that Angular has a lot more problems? Yes, you could. <laughs> that is a possibility. And we'll get to that. So you'll see there are 25 times more posts about Angular. So as Adam mentioned, it could simply be that, Wic that Angular is that much harder, that many more people have questions. But it also means that that many more people are asking these questions and getting answers. So even if there are questions and confusions, there's community support out there where you can get help when there are problems. And just because a tool has low adoption doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just prompts you to ask, why does this tool have less adoption than the other tool? And with Wicked as well, you can see from their mailing list that their, their use has decreased over time. So there's more, fewer people active in the Wicket community, whereas Angular is still growing. 
And I don't know if anyone has ever heard of there being a Wicket users group here in Omaha. I've never heard of any such thing. But we have a JavaScript users group, and we even have an Angular users group. So yay, JavaScript! <laughs> So I think that that alone is motivation to consider JavaScript over Wicket, simply because there's support both on the internet and in the local community as well. But again, this doesn't automatically mean that Wicket is bad. There are lots of tools that are great but just haven't been publicized properly. Lack of community support does not automatically knock a tool out of consideration. But let's think about some of these other things. How easy is something to learn? And some of this is kind of a chicken and egg situation because when there's more community support, that provides more tutorials and that makes it easier to learn. And when it's easier to learn, then more people start using it. So it's kind of a cycle in some sense. But you can evaluate the tools just of themselves, how easy they are to learn as well. You can look at their specific quick starts and guides that I have linked here. And you can think about what technologies the tools are using and what they're growing on top of. And this is where people sometimes think that Wicket would be easier for Java developers because it's built on top of Java. They already know Java. They don't have to learn JavaScript. Away they go. But because of some of the additional knowledge that you need with Wicket and the fact that it's ultimately getting converted to JavaScript, you really don't get as much benefit and ease of learning from already knowing Java. And anyone, I would say, can learn JavaScript. If, you're, if you've learned a language, you can also learn JavaScript, I would say. So I think that even though it seems like it's easier to learn Wicket, in practice, it's easier to really learn JavaScript and Angular. And for these quick starts in particular, they were both very easy to create. It's very easy to create both kinds of projects, very easy to get some, a sample up and running. I use these quick starts to create those code examples I showed you before. So there's not much difference there. But as soon as I started to actually build code on top of the quick start, that was where Wicket became a lot more difficult because I just didn't know what to do. Whereas with Angular, I just learn a few little tricks and then I can just write JavaScript. So to me, Angular is easier to learn, especially if you already know JavaScript. But this is the area where Wicket might have an argument that you're building on top of something people already know. But the next thing you want to consider is maybe I can learn it, maybe I can hack something together, but can I really understand what's going on? Because ultimately, you're going to have to maintain this code. Other people are going to have to look at it. Other people are going to have to use it. How easy is it going to be for them to go in and fix things later, change features? Are they going to have a fun time doing that? And this is where Wicket really is not as good as Angular. When you learn Wicket, you could just learn Wicket. But ultimately, to do a good job and really build quality applications, you're going to have to understand what Wicket is really doing, which means you're going to have to learn Wicket. You're going to have to learn how Wicket translates the code into JavaScript. And then you're just going to have to learn JavaScript anyway when you're having to debug and fix things. So at that point, why not just learn JavaScript? There's a similar issue with other tools, like Hibernate, as a coworker pointed out to me. Hibernate tries to make it so you don't have to write any SQL. You can just create DTOs, map them to your database. It's magic. It's beautiful. You don't know what's going on, but it works until you get into something more complicated and you end up having to write a SQL query anyway. So why not just learn SQL? And that ties into the next point about the desired level of complexity. When you're needing to write a more complex program, you need to understand what's really going on. You need to actually understand JavaScript or actually understand SQL to get the complexity that you require. Maybe your current program is very simple, and you're thinking to yourself, well, I'll just use Wicket or Hibernate to throw this thing together. It'll be quick and easy. I don't need all that complicated stuff. But if you're ever planning to make another website, or it's possible that you might possibly need to add any new future features to your website in the future, there's that potential for it to become more complex, for it to need something more involved, for you to actually need to know JavaScript to do it. So 
again, why not just learn JavaScript now? If there's any chance that you'll need it in the future, maybe now is the time to learn it when you have something simpler to work on so that you could ease your way into it. And really what this comes down to is the level of magic that your language or your tool supplies. Wicket is trying very, very hard to help you out. It's trying to get rid of all the JavaScript, let you just write code in Java, not have to worry about any of those details. But ultimately, it's not supplying the right level of magic. It's attempting to hide all of the JavaScript from you. And I would argue that that's too much magic. Magic can be good. We don't want to write assembly level code anymore. We're thankful for things like C++ and Java and JavaScript. But JavaScript is already high level enough. And trying to obfuscate that even more, trying to hide it under another layer, just makes things confusing. But something like letting me define a variable in JavaScript and then use it in HTML via two-way binding like Angular does, that is awesome. And I would call that good magic. That is the appropriate level of magic. And ultimately, all of this comes down to how fun is the tool actually to use. I've never heard anyone describe Wicked as fun. We even have a developer at that hypothetical company, which may be real, who <laughs> supports Wicked, and he doesn't even seem to like it very much. <laughs> so this is a perfect example of a tool that had great intentions, might work for some people, but ultimately wasn't what we wanted, wasn't what our developers enjoyed, and just wasn't fun. And don't underestimate that power of making something fun. If people enjoy what they're doing, they're going to be more excited to do it. They're going to be willing to take it the extra mile to really produce a quality product. And everyone's just going to be happier. I know when I was coding in Wicket, I thought I hated web development. I thought it was making websites that I hated. I really did. I was like, this is terrible. Who would ever want to do this? But then I discovered Angular. And I couldn't wait to go to work and work on websites. I used Angular to write this presentation. I am trying to find more opportunities to work on it at work. It's just a lot of fun. You could just write code, and it works. And there it is, up on the screen. You get that instant feedback. You have that right level of magic that lets you map data between the JavaScript and the HTML. You can even do things like write your own custom directives. Directives are a cool thing in um, Angular that lets you make your own magic that then other people can use. It's just really awesome. And I realized that I talked a little faster than I originally intended to. So this is the end of my presentation. I will just conclude by showing you the code that is those, that page that I was just showing you. So here's all of the information I was just showing you. It's all written, it's all in HTML, 100% in the HTML file, but using Angular. So you can do cool things like make it that when I click this, I toggle a Boolean that tells me to show the details that were inside. So that's the kind of cool stuff you could do in Angular. I didn't even attempt to do that in Wicket because I have no idea how I would do it. <laughs> so the point really is that you should ask these questions when you're considering a tool, whether it's for yourself or for a group of developers. And if you think you hate something, Maybe it's just how you're going about it or the tool that you're using that you hate. And maybe it's worth trying a different approach or a different tool. And maybe you'll end up falling in love with it like I did. So are there any other criteria that you guys use when you're evaluating tools, choosing tools? Yeah. Uh, curve, how, how much it takes to learn. How much it takes to like the learning curve? The learning, yeah, thank you. The learning curve. <laughs> so in Wicked, it's like, zoom. <laughs> In Angular, it's more like this, you know? Yeah, so the, the fact that it gets very hard very quickly is a problem. You want something that even if it's a little bit harder to learn at first, if that curve is gradual, that's going to be easier and, and better in the long run. Something else, I'm also at a Fortune 500 company that uses Wicket, and it was very easy to do it the wrong way, and with Angular, it was, it's not. Mm -hmm. with, with Wicked, we, we had all these Java developers, but they were doing it the wrong way, and so our, our apps wouldn't work under load. You know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Something else was yeah, and that's, 
that's why we're we're switching to to Angular. Yeah, Angular is harder, really hard to screw things up. Yeah. And I mean, this all demonstrates too how easy it is to get things wrong. Like Adam's mentioning how it's easy to do things wrong in Wicket, but even the whole process of choosing Wicket, it was so tempting. It looked so good. It seemed like exactly what we needed. Like it wasn't necessarily a stupid decision to try Wicket. It was worth looking into. And when we found it wasn't working, that was when we decided to try something else. So it's not always obvious what the right tool is until you actually try something. I would argue that I did not have to know JavaScript to do Wicket. At one point you said you might have to learn the JavaScript anyway. Right. But I think Wicket was good with really yeah, so so Adam Adam is countering my <laughs> statement that you might have to learn JavaScript anyway with Wicket and saying that you really don't. And Nick is pointing out that Hibernate is a better example because you do have to know SQL anyway with Hibernate. There was one other thing that I didn't put on the slides that I was waiting to see if anyone else would mention. And that's testing, because I think testing is important too. And that helps with understanding the code and making sure it's written correctly. And I know when I was writing Wicket, I basically didn't test anything, because in many cases, you'd have to create the entire DOM to be able to test anything. And I think there are some better tools for that now in Wicket, but when I was doing it, it was very hard to test anything. Whereas JavaScript has lots of great testing frameworks. Um, so. I think that that's a plus for using JavaScript as well. Which one do you use for Angular testing? Uh, we use, I always forget, we use Karma, Jasmine and Karma. Yeah, Jasmine to write the test and Karma is the test runner. Okay. And then we also are trying to start to use Protractor for end-to-end -end testing. I have so far